Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock are at each other's throat. They have strife between one another right now. Stephen A. Smith called out Jason Whitlock and he called him some names that I cannot say on the camera right now. And Stephen A. Smith also mentioned that he's a liar. No one likes to work for him. And he came to me crying and begging for a job. And basically he's just a hater and he uses my name for views because he cannot get a real check from a real company. Basically, that's what Stephen A. Smith was pointing at. But Jason Whitlock, this all started because Jason Whitlock said, hey, Stephen A. Smith, you are a fraud. You are a charlatan. You trick people and you are an industry plant. You are an industry plant. If you can see this plant right here, Stephen A. Smith is an industry plant for ESPN. That's what Jason Whitlock said. And he also said that Stephen A. Smith never played college basketball. So Stephen A. Smith writes in his book that he played college basketball and Jason Willock is saying, Hey, I'm doing what journalists do. I'm doing my due diligence and I cannot find any corroborating evidence that you played college basketball, let alone one minute of college basketball. So that's how all of this started. Now, let me put my beautiful fake plant back. But what's interesting about all of this is that Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock are two professing Christians. Yes, yes, yes. You heard me correctly. Two professing Christians. And Chad Ochocinco and Shannon Sharp had a couple of interesting insights about why Stephen A. Smith responded the way that he responded. Enough of this talking. Let's get into the video. Like yeah. that's, that's like, your, like your mama sent you to school. Boy, if somebody hits you, you better hit him back. And if you don't hit him back, you come home. I'm going to march your ass right back down to that school. Mm -hmm. So you get your lick back. At some point in the Bible, God said, if somebody slap you, turn turn the other cheek. No, that's in the Bible. See, I ain't in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, that, that, that right there, turn the other cheek. I ain't in there. That, he, he was talking about people that was in the Bible. I right. ain't in there. But, but, but think about it. I'm going to put something on you, slap me. Listen, Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith, I'm assuming has been turning the other cheek for a very long time. And yeah. now he's at the point where he's fed up. Yeah. So therefore, to me, listen, I like to see this side. I like to see a different side of Stephen A. Smith. I you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. So Jesus is saying, if somebody slaps you, turn to him the other cheek. He's not implying this in a literal fashion. This is a Jewish idiom. The same way that we say that, hey, that's a slap in the face. If somebody disrespects you every time, like I see people disrespect the Christian faith and say, hey, our ancestors were dumb enough to not read because they didn't know how to read and they didn't have the capacity to read. So they just believe everything the slave master told them. And so they couldn't think for themselves. They had to go off what everybody else said. They didn't have a brain to use and to determine if something was truth or error. And so they just took it. They were, they, they were sheep. Some people say that. And I say that's a slap in the face to your ancestors because they are smart enough and they were smart enough to distinguish what's false and what's true. And we got documents about that when it comes to the slaves and Christianity. Now, back to this, the same thing applies here. Jesus is talking about an insult. He's not talking about self-defense because Shannon Sharp said, hey, if somebody, I'm not, I'm not turning the other cheek. I got something for you. And on, I'm not sure if he's talking about a, a, a weapon. I'm pretty sure he's talking about a weapon in 2024, because if you fight in 2024, most likely the person that you're fighting has a weapon and they are, they are ready to use that weapon for self-defense. Shannon Sharp, like, hey, yeah, I'm here. Like somebody do some, I, I got, it. but no, Jesus isn't talking about a physical slap because we see later on in the gospels that Jesus tells his disciples, Hey, take a sword. And what did they need a sword for? For protection. So yes, you can have protection and you can defend yourself. That is a biblical view of protection and self-defense. You can do that. You can absolutely do that. But Matthew chapter five, where Jesus is going into detail, telling Christians how they should live, be peacemakers, as we can see earlier. Like, that's the call for believers. 
Now, I'm not holding Shannon Sharp or Ocho to the standard of believers at all. That's not what I'm doing. I have no business doing that because I never heard Shannon Sharp profess to be a believer in Jesus or Ojo profess to be a believer in Jesus at all. I just haven't heard that. Maybe they are. I just haven't heard it. If somebody has some info about that, so I know somebody can say, hey, I can do a quick Google search, but I've never heard Shannon Sharp say that out of his own mouth or I don't have a quote for it. Same thing well, with Ocho. So I'm not holding them to that standard. But when it comes to Whitlock and Stephen A., I'm holding them to that standard. You two profess to be believers, believers in Messiah. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a command to turn the other cheek. If you, if somebody insults you, you don't have to react. Okay. You don't have to insult them back at all. You don't have to do that. If it's up to you, live in peace with everyone. If it's up to you, live in peace with everyone. I'm going to say it again. It's the scripture. That's so essential to life. If it's up to you, Stephen A. Whitlock, if it's up to you, live at peace with everyone. Now, these two profess to be believers, and let's play, let's just play the clip of them professing to be believers in Jesus. And you see, Jason Whitlock, I'm a Christian. Stephen A. Smith is talking about his pastor. I think his name is Bernard something. A.R. Bernard, I think that's his pastor. He's been his pastor for a number of years. He even said it on the when he called out Jason Whitlock. He said, I have to hit up my pastor. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, hey, speak your truth. So Stephen A. Smith is a professing Christian. He also said at the end, the Christian is Christianity. Well, Brandon was saying Christianity is not a religion, which it is a religion. He said it's a lifestyle. Religion is your can be your lifestyle. OK, religion will. Reflect one's life, whatever religion you follow, if you actually follow it, it will reflect it will reflect your lifestyle, thus making religion a lifestyle, basically. So Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock are two professing believers. And Stephen A. Smith also has other quotes of him claiming to be a believer as well. This news global, Stephen A. Smith, I am a Christian, not in the traditional sense, but I do love Jesus. And my pastor, A.R. Bernard is my spiritual father. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. A.R. Bernard, his spiritual father, and Stephen A. Smith said he is a Christian, not in the traditional sense. I don't know what he means by that. So he, I'm, I'm not sure if he's saying he doesn't believe the Trinity or he doesn't believe in 
saved by grace through faith and faith alone, or he doesn't believe in the Eucharist or communion as some call it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know what Stephen A. Smith means by that. And also another quote, do I believe in the Lord? Yes, Smith said. Do I walk around wearing my religion on my sleeve? No, but as Pastor Bernard has told me before, I have a ways to go. And don't we all, okay? We are being sanctified, okay? Waiting on our new bodies. Yes, we are being sanctified in the Lord Jesus. Nobody is perfect. No, not one. So Stephen A., I get it. I believe you. Stephen A. Smith said, I believe in the Lord. I just don't wear this religion on my sleeve. OK, I'm not asking Stephen A. Smith to be a, this pure theologian. OK, he's doing his job at ESPN and he's doing a good job. I mean, hey, he's one of the top or the top sports analysts or some people might not say he's an analyst or talk person, whatever you want to call it in America. So he's doing his job there pretty dang well he really is but jason whitlock and stephen a smith as believers and you two have strife towards one another and i see stephen a smith calling jason whitlock all these type of names granted i don't know the full context of this i only know the context that jason told me and the context that stephen a told me i don't know every single thing that went on in their relationship okay but I only know the information that was given to all of us via the fearless show and via i want to pause the video right here jason whitlock is not off the hook stephen a smith is not off the hook jason whitlock as a believer in jesus stephen a smith as a believer in jesus you cannot bear false witness now when it comes to stephen a smith not playing college basketball jason whitlock said hey i did my research as a journalist i couldn't find any evidence about stephen a smith playing college basketball and Stephen A. Smith, he bought receipts with the dead spin article. But now we have Jason Willock saying that Stephen A. Smith did not write his book. Stephen A. Smith did not write his memoir. Somebody else did that. That is a bold claim. Jason, if you make a claim like that, you have to provide some type of evidence. Stephen A. Smith is a industry plant. Making a statement like that, you have to provide evidence as a believer in Jesus, Stephen A. Whitlock, you cannot bear false witness. And before I get back to the video, remember this verse right here, Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Paul is addressing believers. We are members of of one body and if you two proclaim to be believers in Jesus because that's what you claim to be we have to act like it okay so if you put out a claim you have to provide some type of evidence we don't want to bear false witness okay we don't all right back to the video the Stephen A. Smith show that's the only information that I have but it makes me think of this passage right here let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, therefore, this is Paul, he's in prison. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humility, gentleness, patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Let me read verse two again. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Showing patience and tolerance for one another in love. Did Stephen A. Smith do that? With Jason Whitlock, some might argue and say, hey, he's been dealing with this for eight years. He was as patient as it gets when it comes to this. And so he finally had to call him out on his nonsense. And others like myself would say, Stephen A. Smith, if you claim to be a believer, I'm not saying you have to live a perfect life. And he does a claim to be a perfect believer. And I know some people might be saying right now that he's not a believer at all. I'm just going by what he said. Okay, He said he's a believer. OK, I'm going to take it at face value that he's a believer because I don't know what the man does behind closed doors. So Stephen A. Smith was that patient, was that gentle, calling Whitlock, you know, all type of words and calling him this and calling him that. 
which is pretty insane to say the least, <laughs> is was that being gentle? If we have disagreements, we as brothers in Christ, or if you have a disagreement with a non-believer and you are a follower of Jesus, we have to be able to walk by the spirit, not by the desire of the flesh. And the desire of the flesh, we want to win the argument. And the, and the desire of the flesh, we want to make a video and say, hey, this person is this and this person is that and call them out of their name so everybody can have this, whoo, this huge shock value when they see the video. Or are we going to stand by our biblical principles and walk according to the spirit and don't gratify the desires of the flesh and speak with gentleness, humbleness, humbleness and love? Now, love is not agreeing with everything someone does. You can rebuke a person in love, but do it in love. And I don't think that was done in love at all. Now, he was calling out Whitlock saying and, and nobody likes to essentially nobody likes to work for this man. And that's the Whitlock's reputation he has to answer for. I have no idea about that. No hard concrete evidence about that. But that's just the word around town, right? That nobody wants to work for Jason. And so between Jason Whitlock and Stephen A. Smith, these two need to find a way to do things in a peaceable manner if you claim to be a believer in Messiah. But one more thing before we close out on this video that I want to mention, and it is in Matthew chapter five. And the crux of this video, I just want you to take this away. The crux of this video, because the main point, an enemy is an enemy, right? An enemy is an enemy. And the enemy will never be my friend. And I cannot be a friend of the enemy. And that's basically our, the viewpoint of the world. Now, when I say the enemy, I'm not speaking of that old twisted serpent, the devil. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about the enemies that we see human beings and we call them enemies. And we say, you know what? I can never be a friend of my enemy. Never, ever, ever, ever. And this is what makes Christianity so unique and so different and so out of this world and extremely hard to follow if you have enemies, like legit enemies or people that you just completely hate or they might hate you. This is a hard scripture to understand because we see Shannon Sharp say, I don't like him. I don't mess with him. I'm like, nah, <laughs> Stephen A. Smith said this about Jason Whitlock. Very forgiving person, not with him, Smith said. I hate this. You know, this snake, okay, instead of saying that B word, that snake, far more than a little bit. He said, I am a forgiving person, but not with him. Wow. I am a forgiving person, but not with him. Think about that statement. Just think about it. Now, let's continue in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, do you see that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy? Jesus said you heard that, right? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. Stephen A. Smith just said, and he's a professing believer, that, hey, I hate Willock. I'm a forgiving person, but not with him. Like, I forgive people that, I, you know, I can really mess with. I don't really, I know, I don't hate them that much. I mean, I got some type of love for, the, for them. They did me wrong, but I got some love for them. But Whitlock, I have no love for this man at all. So, therefore, he gets no forgiveness from me. Zero. Nada. But Jesus is calling us to love our enemies. So he's calling Stephen A. Smith to love Jason Whitlock, even though Jason Whitlock might hate him. And those are the allegations that Stephen A. Smith is presenting to us. That, hey, Whitlock, he's evil. He's deplorable. He's a wicked human being. He's the devil himself. That's what Stephen A. Smith said. So as a believer, Stephen A., you have to. You have to really live by the scripture. I'm not asking you to be perfect because nobody is perfect. I'm not asking you to forgive so quickly because, hey, I don't forgive quickly either. But the thing is, we have to be aware that, hey, 
Jesus calling me is calling me to a much higher standard. And that higher standard is to love my enemies. See, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. And we look at that and say, hey, yeah, I don't want to be a weak boy. I don't want to be a Christian doormat. But Jesus is not talking about that. He's talking about something deeper. And as we continue to read, we get to the end and we see how Jesus says, love those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Love your enemy. So that guy who slaps you. And when he's talking about a slap, he's talking about, you know, an insult. In this context, it fits perfectly with this Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock saga. That if you profess to be a believer, Stephen A. and Jason Whitlock, and you want to disrespect one another, and you want to call each other enemies, but show no love to one another, you are not living the words that Jesus said. You are not living the calling that he has called us to. And that's to love our enemies. It's easier said than done. I know that for sure, but that's the calling. That's the standard. And it's extremely high. Who can reach it without the power and grace and love of the Holy Spirit? Y'all let me know in the comment section below. Whose side are you on? Jason Whitlock, Stephen A. Smith, or are you on the side of Christ? That he makes the statement and say, hey, you need to love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. So if somebody's persecuting you, mocking you, hurling insults towards you, the calling in the body of Christ, in Messiah, is to love that person. Doesn't mean you have to be a doormat or be weak or be docile, but he is calling you to act in love. Until next time, guys. Peace.